This is my Broadcasting Corporation. Inspired, inspired, inspired. Good morning, listeners. My name is Tulan Ngala. We welcome you on Material and Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, Zimbabwe is currently experiencing severe energy crisis, characterized by outages and unprecedented load shedding due to the lack of electricity. Um, we know that recently, uh, Mr. Christopher Mutswanga, the spokesperson of ZANU PF, has blamed the previous government of Robert Mugabe. Uh, it seems there is no ownership of responsibility for the current uh, government and leadership. Um, with us today to discuss the energy crisis in Zimbabwe uh, is Mr. Stanley Winfred Mate. Uh, he is ZAPIS National Secretary for Economic Development. Uh, we know uh, Mr. Mate has written a very critical article or statement uh, critiquing uh, the energy crisis in Zimbabwe. Mr. Mate, we welcome you on Material and Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, how bad is the electricity? or energy crisis in the country right now. Hey, good morning, listeners. And thank you very much, Mr. Kala, for having me on your program. Yes, uh, the country is reeling from serious uh, power shortages. We are having um, complete uh, national blackouts and uh, intermittent with uh, load shedding, which is uh, pulling in from 18 to 22 hours in some other areas. This is affecting the industry and affecting the people. The reasons why we are having these uh, uh, power shortages, as much as government is now blaming it on uh, low water capacity at the Kariba Dam. The blame really is on government not planning properly and being futuristic uh, in providing for enough capacity. The power shortage scenario gets back to as far as uh, 1988. And government should have been putting plans in action for government should have been putting uh, plans in action to alleviate that in the face of uh, the world bank and imf refusing to fund um, construction of uh, stage three of wange uh, in 1988-89 which was meant to be commissioned by 91-92. The shortages started in 92 effectively. Since then, there hasn't been any meaningful uh, change to increase the generation capacity by government. Always give. The Reserve Bank is not uh, giving guarantees uh, through for the investors to uh, invest and have their money returned uh, in their investment. So government is also not guaranteeing that the investors will receive their, their, their payback. The power shortage scenario gets back to as far as uh, 1988. And government should have been putting plans in action for there's been uh, various proposals for government and ZESA to increase capacity. The government has failed on its part to use various national 
resources or alternatives for power generation except to rely on the established thermals and hydro power stations. We have alternatives like gas, which is uh, quite abundant in, in, in Zimbabwe in uh, uh, Matabele and region. And we have got capacity to do solar, solar plants. These are inhibited, the solar plants in particular, by the tariffs which uh, are not favorable for investment. We also have a challenge where the financial systems <coughs> uh, by the Reserve Bank are inhibiting foreigners to invest uh, because it's unreliable. Oh, well, in your statement, uh, you allude to government giving ministers and senior civil servants uh, solar systems. Uh, what is your party's response to this? Yes, uh, Zappo finds it unethical uh, to be offering uh, solar systems to senior uh, civil servants and ministers uh, at which are being offered at very exorbitant prices, which is almost three times the market price of a such a solar system. And um, it is the same people are the ones who are supposed to be making sure that the citizens receive enough power. Further, the Public Service Commissioner uh, principle has alluded that uh, they will also offer other civil servants similar packages, uh, which is a, an impossibility or impracticality because uh, civil service in Zimbabwe range about 480,000. And if you were to give each of them as a package at 14,000 uh, per unit, uh, that amount will be enough to build uh, a new thermal power station of a magnitude of over 2,000 megawatts. So basically, the government is not telling us the truth here. They are, they are not going to give civil servants those packages. The government should otherwise plan properly and put new capacity uh, new generation capacity in the system and stop the corruption. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mate. Yeah, uh, the energy is the engine or driving force behind any economic growth. So, really, from what do you have said, it it seems to me that there are other reasons or causes for this uh, energy crisis. People understand exactly what are the causes. The major causes really uh, stems from uh, the government's policies of deliberate marginalizing uh, material and region, which is a lot of gas, which could have been used uh, or developed this far. Uh, by developing the gas, we could reduce the amount of electricity which is required in the country as using gas as an alternative. The government also fails to use alternative sources uh, like solar energy. The current financial policies or regulations inhibit foreign investment in that it's made difficult for the investor to access their investment and returns. Now, government should guarantee foreign currency repatriation for investors. The government also has a, a problem in that uh, there's rampant corruption in the system requiring unofficial paybacks uh, before licensing of, to investors could be accepted. And this uh, is unethical 
and investors draw back. The other inhibitor, a serious one, is the unacceptable tariffs forced onto the investors by the grid operator ZESA due to pressure from the regulator ZERA and government ministries. The tariffs do not equate to the investment cost. Investment costs require that uh, the unit should be uh, selling for between 11 and 15 percent, but ZESA is uh, refusing to do so and also refusing to guarantee foreign currency repayments. Those are the major, major issues which need to be attended to before any further investment can be done uh, by outsiders. Thank you. Oh, okay. So what are the barriers uh, to entry or what are the challenges uh, faced uh, by those who are already in the market? There are a number of uh, uh, generation licenses which have been issued to companies in the country. I'm not sure the number exactly. But um, none have yet put up a meaningful plant uh, for solar uh, because of the, in, uh, the challenges of the return to capital. All this money to, to do these things, about 90% of it is foreign currency. But however, the government and the grid operator will only offer payment in Zimbabwean dollars. And the Reserve Bank is not uh, guaranteeing that payment will be uh, afforded in foreign currency so that those loans which can be availed can be serviced. That is the king I hear. That's the hamburger. Until government and Reserve Bank sort out that situation, we're not going anywhere. So the present government has to do something about that. They have to change those policies. The Reserve Bank has to play a part in it. Then solar plants will come up very quickly. Uh, we know that uh, Zimbabwe is a developing economy. Uh, most developed, the developed included, uh, the state had a pivotal role to play in terms of uh, economic uh, development. Uh, here in your statement, you proposed that uh, independent power providers uh, or private uh, players are given uh, that uh, leeway, that room uh, to enter into the market. Um, do you feel that uh, that is the way forward? That's the thinking for ZAPU in terms of alleviating uh, the energy crisis. We, we, how will that help? Yes, um, the, the state has a responsibility to protect uh, 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 its citizens by providing the, the major um, uh, economic drivers and controlling that price so that it does not become uh, beyond the reach of the uh, poor nationals. However, the modern uh, approach has been to allow the private sector to participate in developing the economy together with the uh, state so that uh, at the end of the day, uh, the uh, services reach everybody quicker. The advantage of uh, involving uh, private participant, independent producers in this case, is that it is quicker for them as a business to get uh, finalized decisions of uh, um, uh, constructing a plant uh, 
without the the required um, um, systems which government uh, has to go through uh, in actually processing the same activity private sector will have decisions made within a record time while this government will take maybe two years to make that decision going through its systems it is it is only for government to create an environment which will allow the private sector to actually act the other problem our government has or the government of the day has is that uh, it allows the civil servants and the ministers to participate or compete with the private sector uh, operators that way it inhibits uh, the proper functioning of of the uh, production system or or tendering processes and it hinders investment as a whole yes Zabu believes that to, to involve the private sector will quicken uh, the uh, correction of this problem. Uh, it is clear that um, the private sector, if awarded a, 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 a permit or a generating license, it can put up a solar system within six to 10 months. To that job, that project will be complete and the power will be on the grid. Before we talk about Zappi's energy vision for the country, um, there is the National Railways of Zimbabwe, Parastata. I'm just wondering uh, its impact. We know it has been. Uh, decapitated to its knees due to incompetence and corruption. So how does its non-availability or availability impacts the energy crisis in the country? Yes, the National Railways of Zimbabwe was a vital cog in the economic development and sustenance of the country. However, it has been deliberately destroyed by the ZANU government uh, through its uh, other various uh, um, policies. Where, while the company is headquartered in Bulawa in Matebele land, because of differences in political thought, they deliberately uh, destroyed that company and decapitated it. Uh, took most of his resources, tried to put it up in uh, Harare, uh, but it has not worked. The railway's impact is more economical uh, to the uh, econom economical failure to the nation because it is the backbone of moving all uh, goods around the country. As for the uh, power systems, uh, there's not much impact directly to the energy system because the calls which the, the energy, the uh, railways moved was for uh, Bulawayo, Miyati and Harare power stations, which in essence are of no consequence as they are all old and should be decommissioned. But the effect to the economy has been devastating. It really needs to be uh, revitalized and the new management and less interference from the state will assist uh, us in getting the economy going. The other thing about the railways, we, we need to change how we approach it. Zappo would have a new system of resuscitating the company, introducing its uh, manufacturing sector, which was completely destroyed deliberately as well by the ZANU government. Zappo will revive the railways 
in a smart. Yeah, um, as, as, as I said uh, in my previous question, let us now focus on Zap's energy vision for the nation. Uh, what, what is the party's vision for the nation? Uh, thank you, sir. Um, Zapu has a different approach to the whole problem. Um, the major thing is to view that there are various uh, national resources which can be used uh, in strengthening the economy through energy resources. The, the standard acceptable ones the hydro and thermal have been used all along, but they haven't been adequate to deal with the electrical demand and the other energy requirements. It is Zappu's proposal to uh, have a larger energy resource mix to evolve solar energy and gas energy. Let me talk about gas. There's so much gas in the country, which resources have been known for a long time, but nothing has been done to uh, utilize them. Um, however, certain uh, people were given uh, uh, concessions on partisan lines all signed by the head of state, uh, Robert Mugabe, but none of them are functional. And the other thing about that was that those, those, those resources were allocated to people who don't belong to those regions, which they are just holding on as a way of making money out of them when the time comes, whilst the people are suffering. So ZAP intends to ensure that uh, this resource is utilized. Implement, implementing um, and using usage of gas will change the whole approach in that will not only produce electricity, will also produce other things like fertilizer and uh, other byproducts. Besides that, Zappo will reduce the demand of electricity and use gas as a direct energy by actually distributing the gas throughout the country. Uh, the major lines will, di will be directed to Bulawayo, Kweru, uh, throughout to Harare and Mtare and Masringo then splinter uh, distribution centers will, will emanate from there. By doing that, uh, ZAP will create employment for the people. Just putting that system in place will employ, will create employment for well over a million people. And the demand on usage of electricity will be reduced in industry and at, in the domestic arena because then gas will be used for heating and for cooking as well as uh, other uses in industry. So our energy mix is that we look at that we should put that resource into action, into place take away these commissions, these concessions from uh, these people who were wrongly allocated, allocate them to uh, maybe an organization within a region which can take these things seriously. Uh, therefore, uh, in that case, the, 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 end, the electricity layout will now then change so that the Kariba, the hydro, which was designed uh, to, to take about 600 megawatts, can be left
to do that to be a peak power uh, peak power station to come in only when there is high demand so what whatever generation plant has been put there there should be no more increase in it we will leave it at, as it is but however all overall hydro power station hydro power must be upped to a level of about 1600 megawatts in the country within the short term period of 10 years and then the thermal power station the thermal power station needs to be increased in capacity to sit around 3600 megawatts that way we are going to have a stable source of income use the thermal power station will be used as base stations to stabilize the, the, the grid system. This can take five, eight years to complete construction, but it can be done. The solar plant, the solar plant is the immediate solution to all this uh, shortage which is currently there. This can be implemented within 15 months. This can be done up to 5,000 to 7,000 megawatts. But the major focus from Zappos perspective is to distribute these plants around all provinces in the country and ensure that the people who run them, who operate them, who construct them are actually from those provinces so that uh, they are proper, they, there is an element of belonging an element of ownership, an element of responsibility. This is the principle of devolution, which ZAPO stands for. So that in that, in so doing, all provinces will be empowered. We are also, let me divert a little bit here, uh, talking about the mining sector. The mining sector should also have the same principle of devolution, where Put big mines, big gold mines are developed in each province because gold is abundant all over the country. These gold mines will assist in uh, propping up the economy, the provincial economy. So if we're using our devolution pr principles, then those, those provinces will be able to finance their operations. So we put solar systems in all provinces up to a level of 7,000. Then the gas system, we also use it as a peak, peak load uh, uh, stations. Those ones, they can range from 600 megawatts, uh, maybe to 800 megawatts, depending on the abundance or how they are allocated. But that system, within 10 years, will surely be able to have a capacity, a running capacity of 12,800 megawatt. In so doing, the economy will be stable, will be able to export some of that power into the southern power, southern African power, power pool, which is also in short supply. That way, the country will also be getting foreign currency from our power resources. Thank you. Oh, thanks very much, uh, Mr. Mate. Uh, currently, uh, the world is moving away from what they call unclean energy to clean energy. Uh, you have mentioned gas, hydrogen, uh, solar power uh, as the mix, as the energy mix uh, proposed by ZAPU uh, for the country. Uh, do you feel that the mix uh, meets the standards for clean energy? Uh, what about uh, things like uh, hydrogen and nuclear power? What's your view on that? Uh, thank you. Uh, ZAPU is well aware of uh, all the uh, demands, sentiments running around the world about the green energy. We have a resource called coal which we can use uh, cheaply because we have it in abundance. 
coal can still coal power stations can still be run cleanly. There is a way, there is technology uh, which cleans it so that it does not pollute uh, or cause carbon uh, uh, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide uh, problems in the atmosphere. So coal, yes, if it's used using clean technology, it will work. But we have to use it because it is our resource. It's a natural resource we have, we can't just throw it away. Then you're talking about uh, hydro. It's okay, hydro is also a clean energy. Solar is, is a clean energy. Uh, gas is relatively clean energy. So we will not be interfering so much or contradicting so much about the environmental impacts uh, and sentiments of uh, the world opinion. The issue of nuclear, uh, it's a, a sensitive issue. Uh, it's not something which we can quickly uh, engage in. It uh, puts the nation uh, into crosshairs of uh, the bigger states, uh, uh, particularly the Western world. They really don't want a small nation like us to 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 have uh, access to that uh, for reasons that we might be like a North Korea. So <laughs> uh, would rather not bother with that at the moment and uh, really deal with uh, the uh, simpler technologies which which will suffice. With gas as well, if we uh, do it properly, we can export gas directly to, to where there's serious demand uh, in Europe and compete with other countries. We will also export gas to SADAC areas and, and foreign currents. So we really need, we, re we should prioritize development of gas. We have got universities in this country uh, which have got the capacity uh, to smoothen up the, that uh, uh, type of gas we have so that it's easily usable and safe. Yes, we should use gas as quickly as possible, but let's use solar energy first to stop the crisis in which we are in at the moment. Uh, Mr. Mate, it was a great pleasure having you on Material and Broadcasting Corporation. Um, you can give us your closing remarks now. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nkala. Uh, as far as the energy uh, issue, electricity issue in particular is concerned, I think the key lies in the change of policies uh, financial policies in particular uh, and the regulations set by government in Arabiz to allow a return of capital to the investors to assure and guarantee that when it's invested uh, if they, when they invest their money they will get their returns back we should also encourage the existing government to step down on corruption. There is too much corruption in the country. Thanks very much, very, very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Mate. Uh, we know that uh, the economy of the country is not doing very well. So we hope that in the near future, uh, when we've got some economic questions, uh, we can ask to talk to you. And uh, we hope you will uh, oblige and they help us to understand the economic malaise in the country. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.